Hi there, everybody, and welcome to online worship at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church during the season of Pentecost, otherwise known as Ordinary Time. But you know, there's nothing ordinary about the ministry that we're doing here at Good Shepherd. We always thank you for your partnership in that and request your continued financial support. Additionally, though, you can help us a great deal by liking this video at Facebook or on YouTube. If you're watching right now on YouTube, you just need to pause this video and look right below the screen where you're watching and you'll see a thumbs up. That's a like. Click that, come right back up and begin the video. On Facebook, you can simply close out the YouTube video when you're done. It will bring you back to the place where you started and there is also a like below the frame in that as well. It's all complicated stuff but it helps us to expand our reach. And we know that you're all about wanting to do that as well. Thanks for your partnership. Let's worship. We begin worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not followed your path, path but have, have chosen our own way. way. Instead, Instead of putting, putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also so with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and the light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? 
for I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Now let us read Psalm 33 responsively. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by the size of the army nor the warriors rescued by their great strength. The horse gives vain hope of victory. Despite its great strength, it cannot save. Truly, your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love, to deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive in time of famine. Our innermost being waits for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Surely our heart rejoices in you, for in your holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. The second reading is Hebrews 11. Now the faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he was considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born as many as the stars of heaven and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The Word of God.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved of God, grace, mercy, and peace are yours through the triune God. Amen. Well, to get us situated properly once again within Luke's gospel, we have skipped several verses between last Sunday's reading about the rich fool and landed today at verse 32 with, Do not be afraid. Oh, such good words for us. Now, in between these two Sunday readings is a familiar section about how we shouldn't worry so much. And instead of striving after things like what we are to eat or what we are to drink, we should instead strive for God's kingdom. And then all these things will be given to us as well. Well, then we have today's lesson, which is, again, related to generosity and good stewardship and and includes the encouragement to not be afraid, but to be ready, to be prepared for the thief in the night. Now, interestingly, right after this lovely, encouraging speech, Peter then says what I think most of us would typically wonder. So, Lord, are you telling this parable just for us, or is it for everybody? (laughs) It's a classic question, friends. Is Jesus' speech a general kind of all y'all, or is Jesus talking directly to me? Like, we're hoping the teacher won't call on us to answer the question we don't know the answer to if we, if we just keep looking down and don't make eye contact. Now, we don't get to hear this reply that I just referred to from Peter today because it's not included in this reading. And the next section from Luke isn't included in our lessons this time around. Remember, though, Jesus is still talking to this crowd of thousands. And in the verses right before ours today that we heard last week, he has warned the crowd, be on guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then, he says, not to worry about their lives, but to strive instead for the kingdom. Well, then... Right away, Jesus says, do not be afraid. Little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is one of the challenges with how we read the Bible Sunday to Sunday. If left with the striving of last week's verses, we could assume wrongly, that striving is actually the whole plan. It's an easy move from striving to earning, earning God's pleasure, earning God's salvation, earning our worth. And with earning, well, with earning comes deserving. I deserve God's pleasure. I deserve God's salvation. 
Well, until suddenly I'm left wondering if I have strived enough, earned enough, and am deserving enough. Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In Scripture, do not be afraid is always, always a clue that we're going to hear about God's power and promise, about God's mighty deeds. It's always a tip-off. And we, we hear it multiple times in Luke. When Abram hears it in the Genesis reading today. These promises come from God to Abram to Luke to us. Unconditional promise. Last week, I hope you will recall that I challenged us to keep our fingers pointing at ourselves, to confess our own greed rather than pointing away from us towards somebody else. And today, Jesus is offering another way to be on guard against the greed he warns about in those earlier verses. Again, he says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. It is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. What this means is that through the promise, disciples, we are liberated. We are freed through the gospel to guard against all kinds of greed and, and to resist the urge to worry 24-7 about every single thing. I mean, look, it's clear as can be. Jesus tells us to love our neighbor and then directs us to be generous with what we have. Our financial wealth, our time, our individual gifts telling us that where our treasure is, our money, what really drives us, what really matters to us, where that goes, then our hearts will follow. And isn't that true? So why does any of this matter? Well, friends, it matters because there is a disease in the church that has rendered us unable to talk openly about money. Instead, we tend to be very private and quiet about it in ways that really aren't helpful to anybody. Beloved, money impacts everyone on the planet. And in the church, at best, we talk gingerly around the subject. And people still get mad. Sometimes they even storm out of the room. You know, we have been completely transparent about our financial situation at Good Shepherd as long as I have been the pastor here. And this year, we have been especially so since Easter Sunday because we believe we must be. We must talk about it. Yet it's really quite humorous how resistant we can become on the topic of money as Jesus followers. Mainly because Jesus does not hesitate to talk about money at all. <laughs> Here are some statistics. Did you know that nearly half of the 38 parables that Jesus tells deal with money and possessions? 16. One out of every 10 gospel verses, 228 verses in all, talk about money directly. 
I get it. The church across denominations worldwide gets into problems with money. We've seen evidence of that. We've read about it in newspapers. We've, we've heard all the stories. And should we really be surprised? Because after all, we are sinners and we fall short. And friends, as a, a group of Jesus followers who together are good shepherd, we have ongoing opportunities to talk about money and its impact on us. And we are taking those opportunities Now, certainly, we talk about finances in our households, and I suspect we all walk out of worship on days like this, grappling with these very difficult teachings, at least in our own heads, on on the way home from worship. The opportunities to talk about money also exist congregationally. We have a stewardship committee. We talk about finances in church council meetings. We have a finance committee always open to support, to input, and to participation from others in our congregation. Recently, our finance committee has worked diligently these last several years to put forward strategies for growth and helpful recommendations on our generosity patterns. They do a ton of work and they deserve our immense gratitude. And they do an awful lot of thinking about the seriousness of our present financial situation. And my friends, it is serious. They talk to you and and they listen to your thoughts. They, They seek your input, they want it, they desire it. They want all of our serious consideration and all of our partnership. Because as we all know, ministry is a team sport. It is a we and not a me. Together with our council president, our finance team has produced three high quality informational podcasts on YouTube that intend to keep you up to date on all of the issues surrounding us and how our finances are impacted by them and and how we need to adjust our thinking patterns. Council members have given nearly weekly updates on finances since Easter Sunday, April 17th. The leadership of this congregation are very aware of the challenges we face and have held themselves accountable for trying to attend to the situation clearly, honestly, and with great urgency and integrity. They have worked hard on this. And friends, the truth is, We have not moved the needle in the direction that we need to. Today, Jesus' words give us pause once again to talk about giving and generosity. Each of us in our households, as well as disciples together congregationally. Perhaps our assumptions about our own scarcity need to get tossed about just a bit. And Jesus is especially good at flipping over assumptions and messing with what we think is true. Being in the church, the body of Christ, in this place together means that we span pretty much the entire socioeconomic spectrum among our households. Did you know that the church is one of very few groupings of people in society today that contains that much and that kind of of financial diversity. And as such, it provides a stellar opportunity to have our assumptions flipped together. As with many things that Jesus has to say, there are a couple ways to hear them. Regarding generosity, people can very easily hear obligation, duty, law. We can hear it as we must or in commandment language, you shall. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't really motivate me very much. I prefer to hear this the other way. I prefer to hear Jesus' words as gospel. When we hear things as gospel promise, well, it turns things around a bit, and we we hear it as we, we get to. We can do this. 
And as we consider that change in language, we hear Jesus ringing today, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus gives faith along with the promise of God's kingdom. From his gift of faith to us, Jesus liberates us to live generously, less anxiously, and into a future of God's mercy, not based on human merit at all. A future toward which the watchfulness commanded by Jesus today is not one of uneasy anticipation, but of a secure confidence. Beloved of God, this secure confidence is for all of us too. God calls you through your baptism back to God and toward your neighbor. God also knows that where your money goes, your hearts go too. A heart that is real, beating inside of you and oxygenating your body is the heart through which God draws us toward each other and into the kingdom life that God gives in the here and now. And that is a great blessing. And so, again, my friends, to answer Peter's question that I mentioned earlier, yes, Jesus is talking to you today. And that is good news for you, for your neighbor, and for the whole world. The whole world. You get to be a part of being good news for the whole world. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let your kindness, let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn down by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Counsel those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you. Let us trust your promise and not be afraid. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. Merciful God, 
receive our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom, amen. pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach us to us through this meal, and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite everyone who is watching at home to join us in celebrating the Lord's Supper. So if you have not already, please pause and pull together your elements for communion at home that we may join together in the celebration of this meal. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And as we come to the table once again this day, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us once again to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We sing. are the gifts of God, and they are for all of God's people. I invite you to taste and see that the Lord is good. The body and blood of Christ are given and shed for you. And now please receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, 
generous God. For in this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives, all may know life in Jesus' name. please receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Centered in Christ, Good Shepherd will gather, gather in blessings, blessings grow, grow in purpose, purpose go with, with passion. passion. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.